Welcome to My First Boat. In this channel, we will show you the step-by-step -step restoration of our 40-foot vintage steel yacht, with the goal to someday living on it full-time. One could think that it gets easier with every week that has passed. I find the opposite to be the case. The more I commit, the more I invest time and money into this project, the harder it gets to live up to the ever-increasing standard. Add to this that we are slowly but surely running out of both time and money, then you can get an idea of the challenges we are currently facing. But I'm not complaining. In fact, let me first show you how we went from this mess of a diesel heater installation to this. First, let's remove the old installation. Just look at this old Frankenstein of a stand. Here's the solution I've come up with. I got these steel T-profiles. And with these I'm gonna build a square frame which is open on one side. I cut the ends of the three pieces into a 45 degree angle so I can weld them together into a 90 degree angle. And I apologize for the single boring camera angle, but as you can see I did this on the outside and there's just not that many places where I can put the camera. Some final measurements and fine trimming with the angle grinder. And then we can start with the welding. I round off the corners because I will bump into this with my head and like this I just get a bruise and another trip to the hospital. Next I'm welding in one of the two trusses where the diesel heaters are gonna sit later on. And yes, I said heaters with an S. In fact, I'm building a structure which allows to mount two diesel heaters. Next I drill the holes for the platform that comes with the diesel heater. Here I'm making two supportive brackets which will be welded on in a 45 degree angle. So let's weld those brackets in place. As usual, a little close up of my welds. Clean everything up a little, and there you have it. Let's apply some zinc aluminum spray to protect the wells against corrosion. And this is probably the first time I use this spray for its actual purpose. I put some thread locker on the screws that hold down the platform of the diesel heater to prevent it from falling off due to vibrations of the motor or other. Alright, next let's find the right position and see if it fits. Looking good. The old stand comes in handy to keep the new piece in place while I'm welding. We just have to get it to the right height. Remove the paint down to the bare steel. And then we're gonna put it in place one last time with the help of the welding magnets. And you know it's gonna be good if you start a fire within the first 10 seconds of welding.
Let's get that out of the way and then back to the task at hand. And voila! Some spray on the wells against corrosion and then we can put the heater back on. And there you have it. The remaining of the installation is gonna have to wait until next week and we might have to add an elbow on the exhaust pipe here but those are all minor things. For now I'm just happy that the diesel heater is installed in a more streamlined and efficient way and that we can add a second one quite easily if the need ever comes up and just look at all the space we freed up underneath. Next, let's continue the saga of those newly discovered heavily rusted areas in the helm of our boat. I was surprised to see that last week's video received way more negative comments than usual and as I kept thinking about the cause of this, it suddenly dawned to me. In my haste of finishing the video, showing you all the things I did in that week, I totally forgot to explain why I did what I did. You see, of course I know that this wasn't the proper way of doing things and that that rust would have to be cut out completely and replaced. But that would have set us back several weeks, maybe months, which is plain and simply time that we don't have. That's why I chose to go for a temporary fix which hopefully should last for the duration of the coming season and with the plan to deal with it next winter or so. Now some of you are going to say that if you don't do it right, don't do it at all and in the end I create more work like this and you're right. But at the end of the day, this is my project and this is the path I've chosen. So without further ado, let's continue with the build. For this next section, you're gonna need a brief understanding of the layout of our boat. Otherwise, you risk getting lost when I jump around between the different areas that I worked on. The interior of our boat is separated into four cabins or rooms or whatever you want to call it. The forward cabin or galley and the aft cabin both reach a little into the hull. This creates these two areas underneath the windows, which somebody once called consoles. And that's the term I'm going with here. And then of course, what's the console in the run room is the roof or ceiling in the other. So those holes in the consoles which have rusted through and through can be seen on the ceilings respectively of the forward and aft cabins. Now then, here's my temporary fix for this. First I put down a coat of primer, hoping that if the rust is contained it won't spread so fast. I then cover up the other side of the holes with some cardboard. And there you go, problem solved. Just kidding. The cardboard of course only serves to contain the glass fiber filler paste which we are gonna fill in next. In this area the holes go not only to the other room, but also to the outside. So let's prepare the hole from the outside. And then we're gonna cover it up with cardboard again. Now that the holes are covered, we can apply the glass fiber filler paste.
Once the filler paste has completely hardened, we can have a look at the result from the other side. Let's sand away the excess material so we get a nice flat surface. And this is looking very well to me. Then we fill up the remaining irregularities with some fine filler paste. We sand everything down, put some paint back on it and pretend nothing ever happened. Here we are back in the aft cabin where there is also a hole in the ceiling to take care of. And then there's the hole that's going to the outside. Here too we put some fine filler paste and then we're gonna leave this until we work on the outside. There's this rusted corner in the doorway to the aft cabin. And here's the result after several rounds of filler paste. Now then, let's sand the cured glass fiber filler paste on top of the consoles. And I show you the result of this after we're done with painting a bit later in this video. Right now, as promised, I show you the result of my works on the exhaust pipe where I removed the rust last week and covered it in Overtroil rust converting oil. Now, you can judge for yourself, but to me, this looks like it's gonna survive this coming season. So for now, I choose to not worry about this exhaust pipe anymore. What I do worry about is running out of money. In fact, you may be shocked to hear that this project ended up costing way more than we initially budgeted for. And who could have predicted that, right? And so, right now, my biggest fear is that our pace is slowed down because we run out of capital. Therefore, in order to prevent that, I'm going to offer to our great, amazing and generous viewers here on YouTube the possibility to support our channel financially. You can either pay us a coffee or send us a couple of appreciative dollars directly through PayPal. Either way, I thank you very, very much. Now, let's get back to the video. We are now in the forward cabin where the task at hand is to smoothen out the surfaces on the walls and ceilings, scattered randomly all over the entire cabin, actually the entire boat for that matter, are small bits of metal that are sticking out, a lot of uneven welds. And so in preparation for the insulation material that we want to put in, we need to remove all these and make the surfaces flat and smooth. There's no other way to do this than with the angle grinder, so I try my best to avoid that the sparks are damaging the surrounding paint. I use compressed air to spray down the walls and wipe them with a cloth before painting. And then I cover the spots with a couple of coats of primer. I don't want to grind away too much on the welds that are sticking out because they are literally what's holding this boat together so I use some fine grain filler paste to compensate for the elevation. There were also a bunch to do on the ceiling. And after a few more coats of paint, the walls and ceiling were smooth as a driveway on the morning after a night of heavy snowfall. I had to do the same thing on slightly fewer areas back in the aft cabin.
There is still this hole here in the rear, which was closed off by the previous owner, so I filled that up with glass fiber filler paste. I had to do a couple of rounds of glass fiber paste on this one. Sanded everything down. Gave it a coat of anti-corrosion spray, just in case. Applied some fine grain filler paste, sanded that down and then a final coat of paint. Now the aft cabin will get another entire coat of paint eventually, but that's where we are at here for now. Alright, now onto the final big job of this video, which is to paint the hell. I found another inscription, this time it's done in chalk. And if anybody here can read it, please do tell me in the comments. So after sanding all the surfaces, I put down a coat of overtroll oil to add a protective layer between the steel and the new paint. Alright, here we go with the first coat. And for some reason, the helm's structure is more complex than the other rooms, so a first coat is all I managed to do in this week. And I know how much you guys enjoy a good session of painting, so I'll be quiet and let you watch this in peace. And now it's also time to see the results of the holes we closed in the consoles, so here's that. And with that my friends, I'm signing off, thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.